Hey everyone, so now that Ori and the Will of the Wisp is out, came out a few months ago, I can show you some of the animations that I did for the game. So uh, a few days ago, last week, I posted two, two of my animations that I did for the game. Uh, is, is this uh, monkey, monkey king looking guy with the staff. Uh, yeah, um, there are two animations. I'm going to break it down and talk about my process and how I approached it and a little bit of how gameplay animations uh, is different. Not really different, but how it works uh, depending on what you animate in the game itself. So uh, let's just jump right into it. So this is one of the animations that I did. Um, this and this one that I posted. Um, I chose this too to talk about it. my process is because in reality, in when you actually make your animation and put it into the game, it's totally different than if you were to animate a personal animations. But if you were to animate your own personal animation, like uh, if you look back at my other animations that I did, uh, it's not. You can't really just take that and just put it in the game. You have that's a that's a bit of a process. Uh, like the animation has to loop, the the character has to be in place, um, etc. etc. So, but the good thing about this animation is this guy's an NPC. So when you're doing NPC animations, you don't have to worry about too much about those things. And this this two animation in particular, it it bridges the gap between uh, my style of animation and what's actually applicable what you can actually use and implement it into a game so yeah let me talk about my about my process about this two animation so when i got this task uh, about this guy we had no animations for him at all and the the there, there was a brief description of what kind of character he is and what he what he does so he, he is one of the NPCs in the game, and he upgrades your skills and your weapons. Uh, yeah, and yeah, that was the description. And he has he's very high energy, and he has a staff. Um, that's it. It's it's that's the very brief description. And then your job as an animator is to, you know, figure out what kind of uh, how would he move, what kind of poses would he be like. Um, yeah, that was my my starting point, and I just uh, they told me that they want an interact animation. So interact animation is uh, when you walk around the game, you see a, uh, an NPC just kind of standing there minding their own business, and you go up to them and you interact with them, and you buy things or you talk to them. Uh, that's that's the interact animation. So this this animation is the interact. So he'll be up in the tree, minding his business, eating. An onion. <laughs> it looks like an onion. Um, eating whatever it is, and you hit Ori hits the uh, interact button. He looks at Ori and jumps down. Uh, uh, that was the that was the idea that pitched me. You know, maybe he could be I'm in the tree, and he could be doing something, and he interacts uh, with uh, this guy, weapon crafter, and he jumps down or something. And I just rolled with that, and um. Yeah, as I said, like your job as an animator is to make this appealing. Um, and since, okay, and then um, bef when you get an animation task, you don't want to jump right into 3D right away, right into Maya or whatever software you're using. You want to uh, do some research and kind of think about the character um, and what kind of poses would he hit uh, research about this guy. Um, since this guy is a monkey king, it, you want to find some a monkey king looking character. So you want to find something that's closest related to this character. So the obvious choice was the monkey king, you know, with the staff. And I know that he's going to be flipping, he's going to be jumping, he's doing tricks with the staff. Um, so that was a good starting point. And this character is a lot of fun to animate with, by the way. Um, yeah, and. So I went into my you know kind of thinking mode, and draw the poses. When when you get an 
assignment, try to always draw out your draw out the poses at least. The sun is hitting my face. Okay, let's go with that. Uh, yeah. Uh, you want to try and draw out your poses, so you have an idea. At least do at least do that. Even if your drawing sucks, my drawing sucks as well. It's just a bunch of lines and it's mess and it's a mess. It doesn't match with his character. Um, let me show you my uh, 2D animation of this. Yeah, the draw at least you can do at least uh, draw the poses out, the key poses. Um, even better, you can do it in two D, like a rough two D animation like this. This was done, all done in Maya. Uh, Maya has this tool called Blue Pencil. Blue Pencil Two. You have to pay for it, but it's totally worth it because I it really helps me visualize what I'm trying to do. Um, a lot of animate animation teachers will tell you this is like uh, if you plan to. Plan to fail? No wait. Something like that, okay? Uh, it's something about if you don't plan, you plan for failure. Something like that. Uh, and that's that's very true, right? Uh, the after about ten years now, almost ten years of animating, uh, professionally, um, I I realize it's it's so true. That, you know, with the planning thing, um, especially with characters that's very weird looking. You know that. They're, they're like human but not human a monster creature looking thing it's it's really hard to uh, uh, grasp what they're trying to do what you visualize in your head and actually what you actually put out it's it's very different because these movements are not real you don't see people do things like this uh, it, it's not like an idle animation or walk cycle you see that billions of times you see people walking you see people just idling and fidgeting those are very um those you can kind of go with it uh, depending on what they're doing but so anyway uh <laughs> with this animation um yeah i use blue pencil too on maya to 2d out to the animation out of this animation i i find out the poses that i want to hit like i know i want him to swing on this tree on a nice arc and i know he wants to do this uh spitty thing with the stick and it creates a nice flourish, it creates nice rhythm uh, Timing and rhythm, yeah And different beats um, Him eating the, the, the onion looking thing uh, it's, it's like a nice secondary action he, he, You don't want him to just sit there and just like scratching or whatever You know, give him something to do that's natural You know, what, what do you do with your hands, you know, do something That's, that's like an actual person, actual monkey would do um, yeah, the big swing, it represents like a big beat, you could say, like a big long beat. The staff spinning creates like a, a kind of like a humming noise. Like you can see this whole thing like music, you know, that's different. It's like an orchestra, there's like a, the violin guys and that's the big drum guys. And then there's all girls, uh, big drum people. And the, the little the plate, that, that little thing. Um, all these little things, it creates like an orchestra So it, all these little things can represent like his hands And this big thing could be his legs And this thing, small thing could be his ears um, So uh, you could see your animation as an orchestra Different instruments, different timing, different sounds Something like that, right? Um, but timing is the main thing in this, timing and posing so once I got this down, uh, and then I would get feedback. I would share this on to my coworkers. So we have like a little social media platform where we show our ideas and and our stuff, um, and they give me the thumbs up and you know to go with it. Um, when I was working with Moon, uh, Moon Studios, it's very open, uh, transparent culture. So everybody can give ideas and. Um, everybody can pitch in So that's very good um, Once I got the okay And I decided to go with uh, Start blocking out Blocking out the um, poses So this is my blocking pass You see everything's in stepped I even added the spinny staff motion This is just 
a poly mesh and you just, you just deform it, duplicate it so you have two and you just have it spin at a certain speed, it looks like it's spinning really fast. That's the trick. Uh, what else? And <clears throat> you want your camera to always match whatever you're doing. So uh, if you haven't played the game, it's, it's a 2D platformer and the camera is really far away. So everything is very small, like the characters are really small. Even this camera right now, it's actually pretty zoomed in because um, they're, actually, they're actually smaller than that. Uh, what else? Yeah, so in this phase, I focus on the poses and the timing. Um, I, I, the timing, I'll keep it exactly the same as, as the, my 2D drawing. And I just go to that pose, I go to that frame and just pose out uh, that that pose, pose out that pose. Yeah. Um, and you want to think about um, silhouette, uh, flow in the body. There's always a nice flow. Uh, if you're working with a character with a tail, uh, for some reason, S shapes always look nice. So just go with S shapes. S shapes look nice. It's, it's like the three point landing. Three point landings always look good. Like this pose. No matter what you say, uh, three point landings point landings always look good you know even though it's cheesy you see it every single time um but it, but it works you know it works i don't use the pen that much so anyway um yeah so i usually pose out the key poses and if you have a character traveling across the map like this guy he's moving across uh space translating um i would usually pose out the big arcs so let, so he's traveling in this kind of a uh, hockey space is it yeah something like that hope it goes away my drawing okay he so i would want to pose out uh when he gets here when he gets here and when he gets here uh, these are the the poses that you know kind of like uh, blocks out his space that he's going to move to uh so and and this pose of course the first one i don't use this drawing tool that much so anyway uh, and this pose so there's this pose and you have uh this pose i think somewhere around here i pose out another uh i keep i pose out another pose pose out another pose yeah uh and i'll pose out this one and i'll pose out this one and the final pose uh he's going to his is the uh, idle pose here. So, hmm. Yeah, once I got those uh, four poses, four poses, yes. One, two, three, four, five poses. Right. And then I'll start going in between, you know. I'll go into like, start posing out the pose where he jumps off, like, like this one. Or when, I, when he swings through and when he, when he, Transfer, blends, when it blends from this pose to this pose. Uh, the key pose for this, from this pose to this pose will be like somewhere around here, you know, somewhere around here. When, when this pose starts to change from a C to an S shape. What's my pen? C and S shape, yeah. And what else? And like his contact pose, this one. When his foot touches the ground, that's his contact pose. And while I'm doing all of this, um, always keep in mind of his, his pose, right? Um, it's gotta have a nice flow to it. Uh, this is actually something I see quite often. Um, in animations, uh, other people animations, um, is try to visualize a flow in the body. So if you, if you're an artist, you have a, if you're an artist transferring into 3D animation, you have a, a nice advantage to this because uh, you want to try to visualize your poses like your drawings. <clears throat> so there's always a nice flow. Is my pen working now? Yeah. There's always a nice flow in the body. Nice flow with the tail as well. 
I will also pose out the tilt if it's uh, necessary, only if it's necessary. Most of the time it is, like here, that's a nice flow. And you want to see it flow to the hands here as well. And yeah, it's, even this has a flow. This as well has a nice flow. Whoop. And it flows to the legs, it flows to the hand, it flows to this hand, right? Even the idle pose it has a nice flow. Whoop. Flows to the legs, it flows to the hand, flows to the tail, right? So that's one of the key in posing. Uh, timing. Yeah, I would usually uh, pose out every. When I, I'll keep posing it, like fill in the blanks I, until I get to the point where I get almost all my drawings here. Always here is just for reference to see his skill and where he would land and all that. Uh, yep. So I'm trying to see what else I'm missing in this uh, this phase. Yeah, so when I'm sketching, doing the sketching pose, uh, sketching phase, um, I'm always thinking about uh, the pose of the, the flow of the, the, po the flow of the pose. Yeah, flow of the pose, right? There's always a flow in the poses. If you can, it would be nice uh, because you can actually see it see your animation like coming to life and if it feels very motivating and motivation is is a big thing uh when you're working i realize so when i realize yeah because i i haven't been posting any videos for a very very long time right um yeah so as i said like the tail uh you want to yeah, block out the S shapes and the C shapes, like this S shape right here, and even the C shapes. Uh, the thing about tails, right? It's the the big thing you want to think about is it's always it's constantly going from an S shape to a C shape, then to an S shape, then C shape. It's going from S. That's a bad S. That's S, and it goes to a C, and then it goes to an S again, and it goes to a C, and then it goes to an S again. It's constantly changing shape in this matter: C shape, S shape, C shape. S shape, C S C S. Yeah. And if you can try to pose out overlaps, so overlaps is like every part of your body doesn't move at the same time. So if, for example, when he's going from here and he's landing down this way, his arms doesn't go down at the same time as his body. So you notice as he moves down his his hips let's look at his hips his hips he moves down he moves down this way right but his hands are still relatively in the same spot still right here his hands are still there see his hands are still there it's still it's kind of like uh like chains you know this i think people talk about this like chains that's my my very bad drawing of chains <laughs> yeah so Usually it starts with this guy, uh, this one, and then it goes with to this, and then to this. Uh, you can see as like information is being information being passed down to the next chain. You know, it goes to, it starts from here, it goes to this, and it goes to this, and it goes to this. So you could see things as in in this case, as he's going from here to down here. The first chain would be his his foot. The next one would be his hips. The next one would be his head and torso. I usually put them together. And the next one you could be his hands. Right? So that's one, that's two, that's three, and that's four. So when as he moved down, his legs move more, covers more space than his hips from here to here. Uh that's that's one way to show like um, the show overlap is how much space does it, did it cover in this same amount of time, right? So if I'm going to here and here, his foot covers that much and his maybe covers that much. This is space, all right? This is space, right? This is that's his feet. It covers that much space. His foot covers that much space. Hips, hips, maybe just a little bit. I can draw it that small. 
and his hands like barely move so it's just like a little bit of space right uh, so that's one way to show overlap is by showing how much space they cover and because it's different parts of the body they weigh differently your feet weighs differently than your hips your hips different to your torso and your arms they weigh differently so their their spacing is totally different to each other and it makes your animation more organic um, not like a robot uh, let's see All right, uh, so when you block out everything, can I erase my drawings? Clear on it. Okay, yeah, it's gone. Uh, so when, let's say you finish all this phase, you, you blocked out everything. Uh, let me see, what am I missing? Okay, so in this face, I don't block out uh, his hair. You know, he's, he has hair, he has fur, uh, his tail deforms a little bit. Uh, fingers and hand, fing uh, fingers, yeah, fingers. I won't animate them, barely, um, unless I really need to. Like for if I were to show his hand grabbing onto this tree, uh, it's just open or close, that's it. I don't need to draw like, like fingers overlapping like that. You, don't need to do that it's unnecessary at this point uh, the blocking phase is it's about the big picture thing you know the, the timing the posing um, the the overlaps overlaps kind of uh, but main thing you want to look at is the timing and posing it's I think people talk about this all the time timing timing is the most important thing in animation even in music in music the most important thing in comedy is the most important thing so in animation timing it's it's the most important thing like uh, if you look at there's some animations where the the animation is not very polished um but it still looks good because maybe because the timing is good maybe the writing is good you know you have other things that compensate to make it make the whole thing look good so that's what's important in this whole big picture thing you know uh, let's see. I didn't prepare any of these like videos that I'm gonna make. I briefly did. I have like notes here, but there are times where I forget things. So there are times where I just kind of pause for a bit. So just bear with me a little bit. Uh, yeah. So that's the blocking phase. What else? Okay, so if you notice, right, like subtle things, I would block out too, like these little things right here. I could just go from from here and then end this post, but because I want to show like a bit more, this is maybe it's just my thing, right? Uh, in, blo in blocking phase, I like to pose out as much as possible, but not too much where I'm wasting too much time. So because I'm pretty familiar with um, these little things like when he's uh, settling to his idle pose like because I do it so many times he's always going back to his his whatever pose he was at I know how to pose it out and to show overlap and it kind of have a nice like a uh, nice settle instead of like a, a sudden break you know if I were just to go from here and it goes to this pose like to one two uh, it feels like two sudden and I like to put a bit more detail on the blocking so I would even block out like you know hit him going down and going back up to his idol and sometimes I go back down to this kind of like one two three kind of uh like a beat beep 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 kind of timing um that's just my thing um and I like to pose up overlaps as well so uh, even in small things like this so when he's going down from let's say this is the top this is the bottom and this is his idol oops yes so even like his hips uh, this is torso his hips are here and his head right so this is one two and three and i would overlap these these this uh three things these three things 
um, to, to kind of um, show some naturalness into him. You know, some a, few, a bit a bit more life. Right? I just like to do that. Just put this a personal thing, and um, maybe it's unnecessary, but you know, it works and it looks good. So, and after blocking that out, I get to my um, my final thing. And you notice there's a lot different. There's a lot of new things that's added. Um, so between this and this phase, there was a, there was quite a lot of iterations. You know, after I I block it out, I show it to people, and then I get feedback, and I I work on that feedback, polish a little bit more, show the people again, get a bit more feedback. So it's always uh, a feed. What's the word? So you're always showing people getting feedback. And you work on that feedback and you add a little bit more of the polish then you show that again show that again you get more feedback you fix that and you add in a bit more polish so it keeps going up it's always like two step forward one step back two step forward one step back so as in, when you look at the long the, the 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 grand scale of this animation it's always constantly going up even though if you do have to like kind of step back and kind of uh, fix uh, previous notes and such. So one of the big things you notice is his arc right here, this this part of the animation, his, his jump right here. You know, the, the main feedback that I got was that his jump was not high enough. Him going from, from here to here, it's, it's too like, it's too sharp. It's just from here and boom, you know, it could be a bigger arc like that. Like that, you know, instead of like a eh, because uh, even though it does make sense, you know, he he wouldn't want to jump. It doesn't make sense to jump up that way. He could just drop down, but <clears throat> this is animation, so it doesn't make doesn't have to make sense. But it does have to make a little bit sense. But mo for the most part, it doesn't have to make sense as long as it looks good, you know. So that's why the jumping up, uh, the jumping ups, the jumping up looks good, you know. This. And you can see it. You can definitely see it. It's like a nice big arc, and it creates a nice like a little bit of a timing. It goes like it's like a nice air time, and it goes and it swoops down faster. And there's like a nice st stop in the air right here. And the stretch down like that. Uh, what else? So one of the things that I get a lot about is uh, smears. People ask me about smears. How do you do them? It's uh, it's hard. To, it's not hard to explain. But okay, let's let's try this out. Uh, so if you have a person, yay, person, yay. And he's jumping up. Uh, you want to know which part of his body is going up first. So maybe he jumps up with his hands uh, reaching up. So his hand reaches up first. Oh my god, my drawing's not great. Um, his hands could be the first thing that stretches. or And then it works down the chain. Then his torso stretches. Then his hips. Then his legs. Uh... Instead of like just taking the whole character and just like stretching the whole thing, that looks kind of strange. So you want to stretch one thing at a time. So it's such a the hit, then the torso, then the hips, then the legs. Let's see, did I do it here? It's been a while. In this case, I you wouldn't want to stretch the head. That looks pretty strange. So in this case, you, you see the torso stretches, and then the legs stretch. And then you can see the torso starts, you know, going back to his uh, normal state. He's slowly stretching, going back to his um, default stretch. Yeah. And you can see the, the legs, you know, start stretching as well. And the tail is definitely stretching. You know, it's gotten like twice as long, I think. Maybe? I don't know. It looks like it. Yeah. Uh, and the arms as well are definitely stretching. Ooh. And 
You also notice that his arm right here, it's ridiculously stretched, but it's so quick, it, it doesn't matter. People don't see it. People just see the whole entire thing. It's a nice flow to it. So people uh, people look at it, it, it just feels good. Um, that's what I always aim for is, you know, you just watch it. Does it feel good? Does it feel cool? It's like, okay, that looks good. That, look, that feels cool. Okay, that's good. Um, it depends on your style, of course, if you're doing like something more realistic, like a, like a VFX animation, uh, that, that's totally different. Uh, I worked in VFX as well, and I did not enjoy it <laughs> that much because of that restraint that I have to make things look like real life. Oh, the sunlight. Okay. Uh, yeah, anyway, um, what else? Oh... I think in this stage, yeah. At the very, you don't want to touch the, the, the tails and the furs and all that little dangly bits until the very, very uh, end of it. Because uh, you don't want to waste too much time. You, uh, There's a chance you might start to change things up and, you know, just focus on the big picture things as you work. You know, always focus on the big picture things of whatever you're working on. So when you're in the polish state, this is the semi semi final polish, right? Uh, you want to look at the the torso, uh, the arms, the legs, uh, some hands because this character is going to be so small on screen. You barely going to see any fingers like overlapping, so it's not that important to put any kind of fingers and tails yet. Uh, what else? Yeah, if you if you've seen this animation in game. It's the timing is a bit different because uh, the way I don't know what it is, but I seen this in a lot of animations. Um, like for example, Dauntless. I seen the animation in Maya. It's like really good. It's like perfect. But when you see it in in the game itself, it's it, it feels different. The timing is different. Um, one of the thing is is because there's so many things going on. There's like you know there's a nice tree. <laughs> There's, there's trees in the background, they're blowing nicely. Your character's running around with a sword. There's effects, there's sound, there's all these different things. Your teammates are there, your other teammates are there, there's other monsters. And the, maybe the, the monsters' textures are so nice and there's a lot of effects. And there are a lot of these different small things that kind of distracts you from looking at one thing, you know? So, like in Maya, you don't see anything, it's just gray. And you just see this guy, you see this guy. Or he doesn't move here, but you mainly see uh, him. So all your focus is on on this guy. Um, that's I think maybe that's why it looks better when compared to putting in game. And the engine also changes the timing. The timing is a bit different. It goes up and down. It does, it's not a constant 30, 60 frames. Sometimes it a lot of times it goes up. It goes up to 120, and sometimes it goes in between like. 60 and 120 somewhere in that scale and that kind of uh, messes up with your timing in the animation as well uh, you see this in like like league of legends games as well that the timing is a little bit different than when you see it in maya and then when you see it in game it feels different because there's so many things going on and you can't really appreciate the animation that much so that that's why i, I personally like to look at play blast animations and characters are not fully rendered it's because you can just fully appreciate uh the animation how they are stretched and how their timing is like um yeah that's, so anyway <laughs> so let's look at the uh, other animation uh this upgrade one sadly this animation was i did not make it into the game i'm pretty sad about it because i i like this one i put so much work into it um I even animated Ori like what he could do, but you know it. It was an idea. So this, uh, this was, this was another assignment they gave me, like give him an upgrade animation, like what he, what he would do when um, Ori upgrades and upgrades one of his skills or his weapon, and maybe the weapon crafter could do like some dancing moves, not dancing moves, some something you know to upgrade, like maybe takes his energy from Ori and kind of do something with it and puts the energy back into Ori. So that was the pitch, like the the weapon crafter, WC, 
WC. He takes his energy from OE. There's something to it. Put it back in OE. So that was the um, the 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 brief of this animation. Um, yeah. So that with that idea, I went to my way and tried to think of what I could do with it, and. Um, and I noticed that he has a staff, you know, he has, why not the, the staff, the stick, this thing, uh, why not make use of it, you know, maybe he could use it to upgrade his animation, uh, make, upgrade his uh, skills. So that's when I went to uh, drawing mode and thinking mode, um, like all this, I even went to the extent of like, like um, actually replicate this and this animation in real life like how you would spin the staff um i think this is actually possible <laughs> not exactly but you're spinning the staff side to side this way it won't look as pretty as this of course because it's real life real life is not that pretty sadly but you know animation it's it's great you can you can put your your, your fantasies uh make it happen uh yeah that's why i went to the drawing board. I draw out the poses, the key poses. I know this is his uh, idle pose. Uh, what else? I know he's gonna spin like this, and yeah, that's also my idea uh, when I was in this two D animation stage. Yeah, this 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 tool, this uh, drawing two D in Maya, it's it's great, and I totally recommend it. I talked about it a lot can stop talking about it <laughs> you can add different colors <clears throat> so I sketch out the uh, energy and all that and once I did this I shared it to my co-workers and see, see what they think uh, if they give me the thumbs up they give me the go they say yeah it looks good uh, that's when I go into uh, the blocking blocking face uh, yeah blocking face Here. Oop. And his he does his, his key charge up. <coughs> and uh, this, yeah, another good thing about this two uh, D animation blue pencil thing is you can draw in like the VFX because VFX is always a big issue in Maya for animators. Like the VFX really does FX. I mean, really does help with whatever animation you're doing. So I would it would I would 2D animate the VFX in. And you know, just to get a feel of it and to share it with people like how it's gonna look or to share it to the the FX artist like what he could possibly do. And uh I wasn't in the last six months of uh the development of, of this game when, until it's released. So uh, when I was still in, in Moon Studios, uh, they did not put this animation in yet. <coughs> so uh, uh, and apparently they, they couldn't they couldn't put it in. And totally understand because imagine if you go to this guy and you upgrade your weapon and he plays this animation every single time. You know, it's, it would be very annoying. And uh, for right now, I think you just upgrade your animation and it does, it does nothing. You know, it just upgrades your skill. <coughs> it's totally... Understandable, understandable, because um, I wouldn't want to see this every single time. Uh, so what else? Um, hmm. Yep. So as I talked about earlier about poses and all that, um, another thing you want to think about. Overlaps, I I learned this the hard way, not the hard way, but just through experience and failure and all that. Um, when you do like big movements like this, like big snappy movements, uh, think about your opposing limbs going the opposite way, like your hips and your chest, your hips, and your I mean your chest and your hips, right? If your hips is going this way, your chest should be going that way. And that is kind of like a way to create the show overlap to break things up. Like if you have, if, um, I mean, you guys are animation students 
and if you might get notes like uh, the character looks too mechanical uh, break them up a little bit you know that's it's a pretty vague kind of note like uh, usually I, I hear this a lot like people I, I see this a lot in animations as well um, <clears throat> that the animation looks mechanical like it's something it's it just looks stiff and I couldn't I didn't know why I just know that it did not look real it did not look organic and one of the key things is um, breaking things apart you know things go the up things don't move the same time um, all the time things don't move at the same time yeah don't break things up so your chest and your hips or your hands to your hips they don't move at this they don't move at the same direction at the same time so uh, one example oh wow look at the hands the fingers <laughs> Yeah, as you notice, like I don't really pose out the fingers that much during the blocking phase. Just like the generic ideas, like like this one, it's it's pretty clear. But this one, it, I don't really care because uh, it's not it's not the main part. You know, it's, it's not the main point of the blocking phase. The blocking phase, it's usually the the entire pose itself. You know, the flow of it. Okay, uh, so could see like uh, his his feet is going that way his his hips going that way too his hands but this hand is actually continue going up because it's it's going up in the first place so as these move there this one is still up here it's like hey I'm not I don't, what's going on back there because it's so far away you know so these guys start moving and you could start telling the hips, hey, we're moving that way. Catch up. And to, to tell the hips, and catch up, yo. And then the hip, the chest would tell the hands, you know. Okay, in the next pose, you got to catch up. And say, like, okay, I'm catching up. And you could see that. <laughs> right? Uh, so that's a chain of reaction. Like the hands tell the chest. And then the chest tells the hands. Depending on which uh, direction you're moving. And what else? Oh, let's see. So you could see like, oh, oh my God, there's too many drawings now. Yep, you can see like the hands, this hand, this hand, oh my God, the drawings go away. Okay, there we go. The right hand goes up. But these are moving that way, and that hand is going that way. Um, when you have uh, things moving at the opposite direction, it helps create organic feel. But you don't want to just do random things like, I'll just pull the chest this way and I'll pull the hips the opposite direction. You know, you wanna has to be has to be um, has to have a meaning to it. Uh, uh, in this case, because he's going that way I chose to have the arms lead the action um, it depends where what part of the body is leading the action so in this case from okay from this pose to this pose the feet and then the hips is leading the action technically is, is this two together but I like to break them apart a little bit so it creates a bit more overlap you can see like you know the feet and the hips has a different timing I mean, it's a different spacing, you know, the feet goes from here to here, it's a big spacing, but the hips goes from there to, just there's small, small spacing. It shows that, you know, they're moving at a different time, uh, different speed, they have different weight, and that helps to sell overlap. And one other thing, okay, as he's going from side to side like this, right, spinning this stick, did I do it in my sketch? Let me see. Yeah, you notice like my sketch, he's just standing there and just kind of spinning it. Uh, if I were to do it like this exactly, he's just standing, standing there and spinning, it, it, it won't look as appealing. There's no overlap, there's no appeal to it. So exaggerate, one of the uh, principles exaggerate, you see is he's going up and down, up, up and down and up and down. It's like a big squash, a big stretch. Um, uh, get, he's covering so much space between here and here 
instead of just staying in the middle and just spinning it's it's very boring so try to you know create arcs as many arcs as you can anywhere um and they all have like big arcs medium arcs tiny arcs t even tiny arcs <laughs> um try to get as much arcs as you can as you can see like i have the i have the uh, for the chest um there's a big arc that goes from here to here instead of like this one space that goes in a straight line uh have have an arc like that you know whenever you have like a character going from from one side to the other like here to here he, uh, here to here or there here to here instead of going to a straight line have it going into a dot an arc like a dip or an up arc um <clears throat> arcs they're good for you have it have it as much as you can uh and that uh, delicious and yeah it's really good for you um someone's knocking on the door so anyway uh what else hmm trying to think what else I can talk about it's been so long since I worked on this so yeah you know this this loops because uh, the end pose and the beginning pose has to end the same <clears throat> and what else yeah uh, posing another thing about posing I have like a different I have classes of posing so there's A there's B and there's C uh, an A class is an animation, a pose or frame or an animation that you will see millions of times. So an example would be an idle pose or a walk cycle, a jump cycle, a jump animation, an attack animation. <clears throat> These are A poses or A animations. Things you'll see it every single time. So in this case, <clears throat> this is an A pose because this is, is idle pose. And you want to make it as 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 good as you can, as perfect as you can, uh, as much as you can. Uh, yeah, as good as you can. Um, and A pose. And B pose is a pose that you will see uh, for a short bit. You will you will see it, but you don't notice it. You see it, but you don't think about it, right? Think poses like this, you will think about it, but poses like like this maybe like this this is a b pose because <clears throat> he holds it for maybe you know there's, there's a beat there it's like beep. there's a bit of a beat that's a b pose that's a b pose right here this is a b this is a b pose because if i go like here that's like a bit of a stop that's a b that's a b pose as well when he gets to this side when he pose like this this is a it's B A pose. It's a B pose. Um, yeah, <clears throat> and C pose. C pose. You you barely see it if you're not an animator. If you're not an anim animator, you barely see it at all. You you tell them like, hey, do you see that? And like, they have no idea. Even animators don't see it, um, because it the main point of the C pose is to feel. It's it's the smears, the stretches, the 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 like this poses right here, like this stretch. You know he's stretching across that way. You just don't know how. Uh, what else? I think this is the C pose. No. Yep, and this is B pose all the way. But C pose is when he stretches, like when he like a big stretch like this. Like let's let's go back to our interact animation. Stretch pose like this. Ooh, look at that stretch. <coughs> this is C pose, for sure. And uh, that's yeah. C poses are are very important. This this whole A B C poses just just my 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 kind of like made up technique <laughs> um, into trying to understand animation and try to like teach it to you guys, but. You know, I'm I'm trying to trying to really like I, I know a lot of people wants to like animate like a very snappy style snappy style like League of Legends, and I totally understand. I love it too. 
<clears throat> and uh, it's 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 tricky to, to to teach it, but yeah, let's see. Um, what else is there? Let's go back to that one. Okay. Oh, this is my this is my polish state. So there's a blocking pass. So yeah, that's the blocking pass. Uh, and after the blocking pass, I show it to you know my peers and see what they think. They they love it. They they like it. <coughs> and it's back to you know two step forward, one step back, two step forward, one step back. And I end up with uh, with this. And you see, I start animating the tail as well. Uh, well, I guess I didn't finish. I didn't do his thing, his his tail feather thing. I think because I I wasn't sh I was gonna wait for them to put it in, and I could just continue working on this. But oh yo, so what else? Uh, okay, you notice there's there's a difference. Oh yeah, for the first for one bit, this pose is different because uh. I realized that he's gonna go from a different animation uh, into he's gonna start from a different animation instead of the uh, idle <coughs> right uh, and what else yeah this part right here is coming up yeah this when he goes from this to that that swing that whoop like previously <coughs> <coughs> Previously, he was just gonna just you know boop, just dab it on what we said, but uh, you know I realized that it's it's a bit boring. You know he's kind of like, mm. and I wanted to give a little more flavor to it, and I just made this ridiculous uh, staff motion of flinging it back. <coughs> it's I actually tried doing it. It's it's totally possible. It's just it just won't look as cool as this dude. But uh, you know, it works. How does it look like? And uh, what else? Yeah, if you do like tricky things like this, like this this flare of uh, staff flipping back to its hand, or any kind of tricks, uh, don't worry about details. You know, like how would he actually do it? Just just do it. You know, it it looks cool. It it, it works if it matches the character. It it's all good. You know, and. <clears throat> I know there's a lot of different information coming from everywhere, uh, but you know, I, I I don't I didn't write all these things down. I just like teach it to you guys, and I I just realized like oh I I spotted this thing. You know, I could just talk about this. So yeah, that's that's one of the things that you know, it doesn't always have to make sense. It just uh, depending on your goal, uh, de depending on what you're trying to make. Uh, sometimes you can just you know just go with it. You know. Even this doesn't make really much sense. It it works. <clears throat> uh, one of one of the things I I realize when I see a lot of uh, student animations, it's it feels like it's being held back a little bit. You know, yeah. Don't try to hold yourself back. Just go crazy. You know, the pose, go go crazy with it. You know, if it's like a it's kind of poses. It's, uh, this is the the fusion, the fusion pose. You know, <laughs> if you watch Dragon Ball Z, you know, just just stretch it out. Does um make it as big as possible. It's fine, and even though it's they don't feel they don't look very uh central base secure. Uh, go crazy with it. Um, the the key about like making any kind of like um stretchy kind of uh, animation very snappy style. Like if you've seen what else like Spider Man, uh, Multiverse, it's a very good example. Their poses are insane. Um, because it's in that that kind of uh, universe, <laughs> that kind of universe where you know it's not realistic, it's cartoony, <clears throat> and that's that's kind of like like a, like a dream for a cartoony animators to like stretch all these characters out and snap them back in, um, and just let your you know imagination just just let it let it, let it go, let it go free. Um, another thing is to watch a lot of anime, uh, lots lots of uh, crazy anime. Um, 
anime has one of the the best kind of wacky poses out there and uh, you get a lot of inspiration and that's when i get a lot of my ideas from is from uh from anime itself um <clears throat> yeah okay what else uh let's see Yeah. Ugs, timing, spacing, posing, weight, smears, ugs. Yeah, okay, so for example of ugs, like I said, like everything has to come in an arc. If you look at this over here, right? Eh? <clears throat> in this case I could just have him like just go straight down right just go straight down oops that's not straight straight down but you know you want to try and add an arc here so you maybe want to do that instead so you can look at his head or just the, it's the entire thing you can see it goes in an arc in that arc instead of going straight down and then cool or cool you know you don't want hard hits like that Everything moves in the arc. Um, mm, this something I heard it from an animator is like they they think about certain things that you know you can take from. And one of the animators that I, I hear from it's uh, they talk about arcs and they think that arcs is the key to make things look pretty. You know, it's, it's just the arcs. If you can get that right, you can get it, you can get it to look good. And there's there's some there's some truth to that, but <clears throat> there's that de yeah there's definitely truth in that. Um, they have arcs in every every way you can, but not all things like a like a punch. You don't want to have a punch and then like arcs back. It's that's crazy. Um, so you don't want to have like arc like that, you know, because you want to show power. Uh, that's an example of not showing. You don't want to have arcs in that case, but but. Oh, but punches maybe def punches. Okay, this is a fist. This is a fist. It goes that way. It it could go like that. It could start out like this and punch. Fist, you know. This is this this is the arc that it moves in instead of going straight. Right. Hmm. Yeah, maybe there was arcs in everything. Okay, uh, so let's see. Okay, let me just recap everything before I start talking about too many stuff. Uh, so at, uh, so let's go back. Can I type this out? No, I'm gonna type this out. Uh, because in a way that you guys can see it. Okay, so in the blocking. Oh shit! Nope. Uh, let's see. Blocking. Nope, not blocking. We're in the, the planning stage. Not blocking it. So blocking, planning stage. What do we think about? Or what do we talk about? Uh, poses. Uh, strong poses. Nice flow. Um, silhouette. <coughs> right. Uh, research. Know who your know your character doesn't have to be like his, his you know his 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 story or the character story. Just know what character is like. For my case, he's a monkey king. He's agile. He he he, he likes to do tricky stuff with the staff. Um, he's an NPC. Things like that. You know, basic basic stuff. 
nothing too ridiculous with the floor here and what else um research research yeah poses we got the strong poses uh visualizing visualizing we're not talking about your goals it is your goal to make a nice animation right goals in this animation uh how would it look like in your head you want to kind of see it and how would the angle be like and how the time will be like you know timing what else uh 2d anime if you can to the anime if you can uh this thing called blue pencil blue pencil for maya blue pencil to for maya i think it's i forgot how much it costs i think 35 bucks something like that but you know it's it's worth it uh i i really like it and i i'll post the link in the description where you can get this uh tool if you want to go for this uh, 2d animation approach because um, it's not for everybody uh, i know a lot of animators that just dive right into maya they animate and it's perfect i know people like that um, i'm kind of jealous <laughs> and they're not 2d and they're not, they're not animators at all they're just artists or they're generalists and yeah but you know some people have to work a little bit harder uh, that's that's okay you just just work with it and you know it gives your life a bit of meaning if you have like skills just kind of like handed to you you didn't work for it and it's not as uh, satisfying <coughs> what am i talking about so anyway um planning poses research realize 2d anim acting act ref act, acting ref you can use a video acting re reference uh have 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 your 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 friend do it act it out if you're too shy uh, you act it out. You act it out. You know, just get get over it. Don't 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 get don't be shy. Don't be shy. You, you'll be fine. You you live. Um, what else? Oh, planning. Okay, next phase. <laughs> um, blocking. Let's see. Blocking. Let me let me give a nice little, you know. A little OCD of making things look proper. Okay. Look, okay. Anyway, uh, let's see. Blocking. Uh, key poses. Key poses. Uh, look at the big stuff. You know. Uh, the the flow flow of the body. Flow weight. Silhouette. Pretty much exactly, pretty much exact, exactly as as your as your two D animation if you have that. Uh, time timing follow follow your your two D animation, your two D anim. If you if you don't have that, um, oh yeah, this is another tip that I hear a lot, and I tried it a few times, but I just. I, I don't stick with it all the time but if I'm struggling to get the feel of this uh, animation I would just do it this way um, is to have everything in trees in, in three in three frames per second in trees uh, key keyframe every three frames something something like that or every five or, or five whatever it Th doesn't matter uh yeah and that helps you visualize the the timing of things you know if if certain keys are like uh, like three frames and then like 10 frames and eight and seven it's it's hard to get a feel of the the timing to understand uh, what the timing is because it could be because you have five frames to get there or that's why it looks slow or because it, you have 10 frames to get there that's why it looks slower or two frames and you know, so if you have it every three frames, you can you can base the speed base. You can base the speed based on that 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 amount of space in between the, the timing space, right? Um, yeah, that's one of the the key. Let me just label this. This is the tip. Uh, this this is this is a tip. Uh, 
Mm, it's optional. It's optional. <coughs> what else? Timing. Oh. Timing. Pausing. Uh yeah, don't waste don't waste time on like small stuff. Don't waste time on the small stuff. I I know when I animate, right? And sometimes you get distracted with other things like, oh, I want to animate uh, his hair to look good for this um, amount of time. Or I want to animate his fingers to nice, have a nice, like, nice like, pose like, like this, like that. You know how people like to pose their hands really pretty with, with these two fingers always connected and you want to pose it nice spacing. So don't try to waste too much time doing things like that. Uh, that happened to me and <clears throat> stop stop doing that if it's grabbing something just just grab it you know just just grab it and and just pose like this don't don't finance the fingers way so way too much you're wasting too much time so just you know just make it it's it's really small stuff like that you don't have to think about no one's gonna see it or nobody think about it they usually think about you know the big stuff like the flow the weight the silhouette <clears throat> the timing oh my god timing is so important timing but it's not poses anyway what else let's let's separate them don't waste all the small stuff uh fingers toes tail mm, ears brows okay uh timing timing Yes, timing, uh, hmm, let's see. In the blocking pass, timing is about 80% there. Timing is about 80%. percent—eighty percent about, what's with my grammar? About 80% there. Uh, it's not exactly. So when you're blocking it out, uh, don't get too anal about timing. Uh, don't get too anal about timing um, because once uh, there, there's this thing with animators where, where they go from Blake blocking phase to spline phase uh, they get really scared you know like uh, I, I, it's gonna look really crappy when I hit this spline button uh, and it will <clears throat> because uh, it's not there yet the timing's not there yet it's the timing just to give you a rough idea in step note <clears throat> timing in step uh, what else let's see I'm looking at my notes uh, pose out overlaps did I spell overlaps right? nope is it yeah, yeah. Pose out overlap, pose overlaps if you can. <clears throat> Things move in different directions. Chest and hips. So if let's see on the camera, I'm moving from here to here. Um, let's see, my head is one thing, my chest is one thing. So maybe my chest would go first then my head would go or you want to do it the opposite way and then yeah the opposite way same thing like that right or you can do it like if you want your head to lead the action so your head would go first then your chest would go and your head go first <laughs> your chest. it's like a dance move okay um yeah so uh pulls out overlaps like that instead of having like this is one key pose and this is one key pose you want to pose out the overlaps as well uh, it really does help uh, visually see your animation. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, blocking face is really important. Um, I do have to talk about this blocking face a little bit. Um, hmm, let's see. I won't put it in here, but when uh, when I do like a very simple animation, like an idle an idle animation, yeah, um, I won't approach this like you know stepped and my sketching it out, I'll just jump right into Maya 
uh, as long as I got my post right, if you, uh, the idle animation is about that one post, and you just base everything around that one post instead of like uh, making the whole thing look good. <clears throat> if you're just making like an idle that just loops, just have one post that um, that looks good, then you work your idle around that one post. Uh, that's that's how you work when doing simple things like that. Uh, a walk cycle, on the other hand, it's oh, walk cycle. On the other hand, you don't need to sketch it out. Maybe you do, but in most cases you can jump right into Maya, but you still start in this like stepped uh, phase. But it really depends on the character of the walk. So yeah, I can't really say much about that. Not right now, at least. <coughs> so blocking, blocking. Oh yeah, there's this blocking plus, blocking plus. I wonder how long I've been recording this. So, blocking plus, uh, still in stepped. It's still in stepped. At uh, fill in the blanks. In the blanks for the poses. Fill in the blanks for the poses. Yeah. So if you as you key in those like key poses. Oh, one more thing. Like if the characters, if character is moving, is translating, trans, translating, translating, block out the path. Block out the path. Mm, yeah. So what, what I talked about, you know, like earlier, like if he's moving in this kind of a uh, path, uh, block, only pick the poses that you know blocks out these paths so like here and here here the down of the arc the top of the arc and the landing you know one two three four five five poses uh, so when you hit spline it covers all this uh, space if care is translating block out block on the path block out the path block out the path yeah block out the path yeah uh, let's see, still unstepped, fill in the blanks. Uh, yeah, so you can look at blocking plus like a blocking itself. It's like the puzzle when you, you work at, I mean, we all played puzzles, I think. We all played puzzles, right? Uh, at least our, my generation at least. And above, uh, when you work on a puzzle, you usually work on the corner bits, right? The, 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 the corner. So you can kind of block out like, Okay, it's gonna look like this big, you know? And then you work on the lines, and then you work on certain keys that you find, oh, this one connects to this, and this, and this, and this, and you work from there, and you, you know, fill in the blanks. That's how, that's where this, you know, term come from. Blocking plus is like that, you know, you're, you're filling in, you're filling in the blanks. Yeah. Okay, uh, what else, blocking plus? Huh. Yeah, tails. Mm, let's just put it here. Tails, tails move from S to C shape and back to S, etc. S. <laughs> okay, I. Yeah. It always goes from an S shape and a C shape, from a, diff a different variation of an S shape. A different vari variation of a C shape. Uh, they don't always look the same, you know. All S's. I'm connecting my tablet. All S's. They don't always. They don't always look like this. They could look like this. They could look like. Oh my god, this. Drawing it reverse sometimes it's confusing. Yeah, it could look like this. It could like this and C shapes C, C shapes it could look like this 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 that's a C shape too uh, yeah so uh, tails always move in shapes S shapes and C shapes oh blocking plus Block out overlaps, pulls out the overlaps, yeah. 
and uh yeah the blocking plus stage um it's i it's my favorite stage it's kind of one of my favorite stages in animation blocking plus and the polish state but once you get to a certain stage of the polish, it's like, ah, okay, I just want, I just want it done. <laughs> you just you know, do it and just get out of there. Um, but blocking plus, um, when you do, when you block out the in between poses between two poses, like the stretch, like my the C pose as I mentioned, uh, you start to feel the animation when you hit play. You see it like, oh, you can see the overlap. You can see him stretch. You could be see him squash and. Um, uh, in between poses, in between poses are sometimes motivating. Uh, it's a weird way to say it, see it, um, but when when you hit play, it it feels it feels good. You know, like oh shit, it's it's looking good, it's coming together, and then you just keep working, and you get into that flow zone. Uh, you get into, yeah, the flow zone. If uh, you've not, never heard of it, it's when you when your when your skill matches your challenge and like the ch when something you're you're doing something you're working on it's not too challenging it's not too okay you're, you're right here <clears throat> you're right here well, let me look at the camera okay this is my right hand yeah if you're right here and <coughs> your challenge is not too easy it's not too hard it's right there with your skill level this stage right here this is the flow stage and whatever you work on, you want to try to hit be in this flow stage. So when you work on uh, when you work on your next animation, your next personal animation, your next whatever, uh, don't go for too much. You know, don't try to make a movie, <laughs> a one-hour movie. That's insane. Um, work slowly. You know, if you're working on a bouncing ball, work on a bouncing ball. Next thing. Work on bouncing ball with tail. Next thing, work on a flower sack. Next thing, a flower sack with legs, and you move your way up, and you're mo you're working on a dialogue shot, and then you're working on a fight scene, and then you're working on a fight scene of one guy versus ten guys. Um, that's you slowly build up your your skill. <clears throat> uh, yeah, um, that's flow state, and that's how you get yourself. Uh, uh, stay, uh, keep, keep, stay motivated. That's, that's the one I'm trying to say. <coughs> I don't know why is this here. Should I put this here? Okay, whatever. Um, blocking plus. Stepped mode. Uh. Let's see. Okay, we talked about ABC poses, right? I'll just put it here. C poses. Um, the A. The ones you see see the most. Idols. Oops. Excuse me. Idol poses. Uh. The B pose, it's like the pose you see, the pose you see, but you don't think about it. I think that's the word for it. C poses, you just you just feel it. You just barely see it, barely. <clears throat> so, uh, that's unnecessary to know that, but you know, I just I I want you to think about. Mm, understanding uh, priorities, you know. So, when you're polishing a pose, don't just polish all poses to look like a poses. You're wasting too much time. Uh, over the line, if you have time, you want to polish every pose to be an a pose. But um, just start with the big picture. You know, the big picture things: blocking, blocking plus stages. Um, what pose? Um, we you see the most and try to put in more love into it um, If if it's a smear frame, you don't need to polish like fingers and things like that. Just, just stretch the character uh, It usually feels good. Uh, make sure it goes in an arc or flow uh, Yeah Let's see what else uh, hmm. Yeah, always get feedback always get feedback
uh, yeah, before you go spline, um, go get feedback. Um, I so mm, I I rarely see people's. I sometimes I see like 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 people's stepped animation, and you could see like if they hit spline on this, I don't think it will look good. You know, um, if they are stepped animation looks good you know that their spline is going to look good like um uh yeah maybe that's uh, i think there's a lot of animators that worked in this kind of workflow where they go from a stepped you go to, to a spline it's a very typical uh, workflow you see in animators but um as i work um in animation long enough you start to see a lot of people with different work styles you know not everybody goes to a stepped into a spline uh, when i was working on ori a lot of times I'm just working spline right away, you know, um, uh, because I, I worked with uh, one of my coworkers there. Um, I realized he just goes spline, you know, right away. Um, but while he's working in spline, he's, he still keeps in mind, you know, like this pose, make sure this pose looks good, you know, and then work around, work everything around this pose. Um, because when you're working into a, an animation, they are going to actually implement it to a game. You're not gonna have all these like crazy attacks that like that I like to do in my animations. Uh, it's usually like just one, it's one hit back to idle, uh, one jump back to idle. It's one thing you know. That you don't get to see all this pretty flowy uh, uh, arcs and all that. So because of that, you have to give a lot of love into. Uh, what am I talking? <laughs> you have to give a lot of love into you know what's important in that very short animation. A lot of my animations are only like a second long, one second, two seconds, sometimes less than a second, you know. I did like a dodge animation for Ori, and it's so fast you barely see it. <laughs> if I show it to people, like, they, they don't know how to appreciate it, so, it and I spend the most time on that uh, dodge animation, which I will show you uh, next time. Mm. <clears throat> but for now, I'll just stick with this and try not to talk about too many random stuff. Always get feedback. Uh, okay, let's move to the next stage. Polish. It polish. Okay. Polish. Oof. What did I talk about in polish? Uh, arcs. Uh, spline. Arcs everywhere. Put arcs everywhere. Um. Even if it's a punch, maybe. I haven't done a punch animation. So I don't know. But maybe there's an arc in a punch. Maybe there is. But, um. Wait. Spline. Spline time. Spline time. Put arcs. Put arcs. Lots of arcs. Uh, everywhere, right? Uh. Uh, exaggerate, exaggerate, yeah. Sometimes you have to exaggerate, like you see my my little weapon king, weapon crafter guy. Oh, yeah, like I talked about. Um, put arcs everywhere. Uh, even if it's um, it looks like it's exaggerating too much, but because this is a cartoony style, you can do it. You can do it. Oh, let's see. Yeah, exaggerate. Um, hmm, exaggerate. Yeah, oh, I don't know much to talk about in polish. I'm trying to figure out. Let's see. Let me look at my animation again. Okay. Yeah, spacing, spacing. I don't know if I should put it here, but spacing. Um. Everything has their own spacing. Legs, hands, head. So like head spacing, like if I whip my head from one side to the other, the spacing is one way. If I whip my hand like that, it's a, it's a different spacing. If I whip my torso from one side to the other, it's a different spacing. So. Uh, <clears throat> everything has a different type of sp their own different type of spacing, and try to vary that out. So not everything has a yeah, not everything has their own spacing. So hands and uh, doesn't have the same spacing as your hips, um, since they have different weight. So different weight has different 
spacing, different weight. Different weight have different spacing. Different weight have different spacing, yeah. Okay, yeah. Different spacing. What else? Hmm. Okay, keep the the ears, the small stuff. Ears uh tip of tail fingers for the very end. Um I say this because you don't wanna waste don't wanna waste time. Don't waste time. Ah, let's not put that in. Okay, yeah. Keep that at the very end because you might change things as you polish in this uh, spline stage. You might move things around. The timing um, might not feel the feel right when you spline out. So, um, yeah, the the bridge between like pot blocking and spline it's it's very uh, it's very different. So um, it's the timing is different. So don't waste time doing the small stuff. Always look at the big picture. Huh, my tips are everywhere. I mean, like it's all over the place. Like, um, it's it's not consistent, but you know, I I hope it helps. I hope it helps. So yeah, I think I should just I should just call this. Uh, yeah. Thank you, thank you for thank you for watching. I'm pretty exhausted right now, and I'm gonna make another video. I'm I'm working on some of my own animations right now, my own personal animations, um, and I'll show you. I mean, I'll show you what I got. It's, it's a blue, a little bit different from what I usually do, and it's a bit ambitious. I want to try something different, and um, but you know, just like I said, you know, always challenge yourself just a little bit. Not don't go overboard. Don't make a movie. You know, just make yourself a little bit more. Uh, from just challenge yourself a little bit um so right now i'm working on something with moving cameras i don't usually move car cameras a lot because cameras kind of like takes away your animation you don't know how your character is moving but i like to work with moving cameras again because i i stopped animating the cameras you know while i was delaying animation and i want to like you know see what i can do <coughs> but uh yeah, um, I'm gonna leave some links on the description. I'll show you some some examples of like very good blocking passes. Uh, I I came across some, and I saw I came across one. Um, I forgot his name, <laughs> but I, it's Jesse something. I think you guys know maybe Jesse something. It's like a Team Fortress Two animation. It's it's really nicely done. Um, you know s some good examples of what. A very nice step to blocking pass looks like <coughs> and you know uh, in the future I'm gonna I'm gonna break down some of my other Ori animations it's a hero character so today um, I kind of break down the NPC character uh, gameplay gameplay has is it comes in three different categories there's one for the hero character hero characters are the characters you control there's NPC characters which is like uh, people that you interact with, like people you talk to, but um, you can just just straight up animate it, and it, it usually just works. NPC animations are usually usually like that, and then enemies, uh, it's a little bit different because you have to put more focus on uh, the po certain poses and the anticipation, um, so it, it feels more fun to fight whatever you're fighting. <coughs> so that's the the three different categories in gameplay uh, animation. But uh, cinematics is not included. Cinematics is a different category. So, yeah. So next time I'm gonna do some Ori animation stuff. Some Ori animation breakdown. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Uh, see you next time.